Hey, what's up? Ken from Palm Beach Dino here. Today on the Dino, we've got our 2020 GT500, and uh, we're going to do a little bit more product testing. Last time we left you off, we had the lid off the airbox, uh, MS109 in the tank, and a lethal resonator delete, and we made 749 horsepower. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that Dino graph right now. As you can see there, awesome power, pulls all the way up to 8,000 RPM. So, in pursuit of a little bit more power, RareFab just recently installed the Lethal Track Exhaust, um, and changing to an exhaust like this has a twofold benefit to your vehicle uh, as far as generating power or possible uh, gains, which is you're going to flow more air, which is going to possibly pick up more power. And the other thing is, is in stock form uh, with a normal exhaust, the car has to enrich in itself to keep things cool. Uh, once you go to a track exhaust, you no longer need to do that, so you can keep the uh, air fuel ratio uh, at a more reasonable uh, point for better power. So anyway, what we're going to do is, is the weather today is a little bit worse or a lot worse than it was uh, when we made the 749. So we're just going to go ahead and baseline the car with no tune changes. So we're still going to see the enrichment that we saw before, but um, possibly we'll see some gains from the additional flow in the catalytic converters and that will be our baseline tune for today. So let's go ahead and see what it makes. Well, there you go. That's why we did a baseline. I was expecting a small gain uh, without a tune change, and we actually lost a good chunk of power. Why is that? Well, you got to dig a little bit deeper, and that's what we do here on these videos. We don't just show you the numbers. We try to interpret them and show you what's going on, because even you know, at a first quick glance, this might be confusing, and it was to me until I looked closer. Um, like I said today, it's the weather's not the best, and if you look over here at the conditions that each run was done under, that's the answer. Now. Don't forget, dyno numbers are weather corrected, so you can look at one of our other videos about that, and we're using SAE correction, which should account for weather differences, but it only does so good, and especially on like a supercharged vehicle, it's gonna be off a little bit, and why is that? Well, barometric pressure is gonna have a very big impact on how much boost you make. The, the uh, supercharger ingests the atmosphere and compresses it. If you're starting with less pressure, you're gonna end up with less pressure. And that's what we see here. So, and it's more than just pressure. It's temperature and humidity. Humidity is another big uh, enemy of making power. And that's why down here in South Florida, even though we're at sea level, everybody expects us to run incredible ETs. But really, the Northeast is a little bit better for that. And the main difference is weather. Pressure. Uh, we get the pressure down here, but it's the humidity that really hurts us and the temperature. So, anyway, that first run was at 72 degrees. This run was at 80 degrees, so it's 8 degree different difference. That's definitely a factor, but that's the least impact on these, diff on these different pulls. Uh, the humidity is a huge difference. We were at 33% humidity the other day uh, when we made the 749. Today we're at 60% humidity. Uh, these numbers aren't always accurate as to what you would expect to see when you check your local weather, but the differences is what we're looking at. So it's double. Uh, and the that's reflected right here in the weather correction because the weather is so different this number is actually being reduced by three percent that's what 0.97 means and right now we're dynoing at pretty much sae conditions there's no correction to the blue line so anyway the point is we wanted to see how much we would pick up with this as a whole in tune so right now we're gonna use our we'll, we'll keep both of these up there to see where we wind up but right now uh, we're at 739 uh, and then once we increase uh, or lean the car back out 
and make a few more tune changes. Hopefully we can wind up higher than 749, but this is an, an exact reason why you can't compare dyno numbers online. This is the same car on the same dyno with no tune change uh, and the exhaust modified and it's actually lower on power, but not because that device or the change caused the power change. It's really weather related. So anyway, let's go ahead and make some tune changes and do another pull and see what we can pick up. Okay, you know, doing pretty good. Wow, look at that, we picked up 20 horsepower. This is another great teaching moment for dynographs, okay? Did we make 759? No, we did not, but that's what it says. But look over here. So what I'll do is, is I'll zoom in. So if you look at the green line and the red line, uh, which the red line was our previous best on a different day, different weather conditions, it looks like it's tracing directly over it. So why did we make 759? Well, if you zoom in, Look at that, what is that? Do you really think that's doing anything? Of course not, but if we don't show the graph and we show our max power numbers, wow, we're heroes. So anyway, uh, that's, a, that, you know, right now, if you look at it, it looks like we're um, pretty much equal. You know, it's a little down down here, um, but I know why uh, the timing was off down there. It's something I changed by mistake. Uh, but through there, we're about the same. So I'm going to make some more changes and see what we can get out of it. Okay, we did a few more pulls there. One other thing I wanted to try was to rev it just a little bit higher than 8,000, uh, which we'll try to shift it that high at the track now because looking at the graph, um, it still is continuing to carry. If, as you can see on this graph here, uh, peak power is at 8,150 RPM, which is pretty much where I lifted, so it's still gaining power. Um, to look at these differences, we've got to zoom in because it's not very different down here. We'll look at it up here. Uh, Realistically, these are all the same except this blue one. The blue one where it continued to pull up top, I went ahead and I changed some cam timing there and it liked it. So um, right now we're at 760 and 602, which, uh, you know, we're making pretty much engine, the quoted engine numbers now at the wheels with very few modifications. We're going to make just a couple more changes and see where we wind up. Where we're going to end up with this one uh, we made 763 and 610 and then right behind that we made 765 and 608 uh, they're very similar there's slight differences and this is really no difference in the tune um, let me get rid of some of these and we'll look at it a little bit closer so our best before was that one and then these last two were that one there uh, that's a pretty significant gain uh, the whole way and then the green line didn't do quite as good through here, but again, you're gonna get some inconsistencies pull to, pull to pull. The important thing to look at here is it's making power well past 8,000. 
and every you know the data log looks great i could do another pull and it might even make more but we're not here to do dyno pulls we're here to tune the car to get it to the track and guess where we're going tonight we're going to the track one more thing though later today before we go to the track we're going to be trying the new jlt prototype intake uh, that's going to be here today not going to be part of this video but it'll be part of one of our future videos um, and you'll be able to see what the car does with the lethal track exhaust and the JLT on MS109. Um, our previous best is 1042 at 137, so we're hoping to get real close, if not past 140 miles an hour, and maybe knock a couple tents off. So make sure you stay tuned to our channel and subscribe. Hit the like button, hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos, and we'll see you on the next one.